Hello, hello, welcome, welcome to the September 2020 um, Quilt of Joy Clubhouse. So I'm glad that you're here and we've got folks filing in. Uh, we have this simulcasting, it's live streamed and it's simulcast on both our Quilt of Joy Facebook group as well as our Quilt of Joy YouTube channel. And we now have it embedded over on our website as well. So we've got lots of places for folks to watch. And um, it's always fun to see where people are from and where you're watching. So over there in the comments, um, do hop on and let me know where you are. Um, we get folks coast to coast and across the globe as well. And we do have folks um, monitoring the chat. So if you have questions for me or something comes up and you need a little more clarity, um, just holler out. Just know there's about a 30 second delay between um, what comes out of my mouth and when uh, we see your uh, comments pop up. So sometimes I miss them, but I do apologize. But I want to know, you know, what you want to know. I want to know what you're interested in because it helps me kind of craft and know what direction to take the, um, the, the content that we put in the clubhouse. So um, I welcome you and I'm just so glad that you're here and I hope that you're doing well. Um, I hope that everybody in your family is doing well and that you're able to get out in the sunshine a little bit and enjoy hopefully a little bit of the fall uh, air that's coming in. We've had a few kind of small crisp days here in Kentucky, not many, um, maybe like a few hours, but it's enough to make me uh, long for uh, what's going to come at the end of September when hopefully things do get crisper. Um, and um, so let me know, Rachel, are people filing in and, and where are they from? Put up there where you're where you're watching from because it's always fun to see where you're from um, and see where you're coming in from. So uh, we are going to be talking about a lot of things today and I'm really excited about everything that we have planned for you. Um, we have a program that's all about putting feathers in diamond shapes. Um, we have spent 2020 as like the year of the feather and there are so many feather concepts and um, lessons that we've gone through so far and of course all of the clubhouse meetings are all recorded so if you've missed one or maybe something spoke to you and you want to share it with a friend um, all of those are um, uploaded and, and saved over on our YouTube channel as well as on our website so you can go back and you can rewatch anytime you like um, but we've had loads and loads of feather content little lessons all throughout the year and we are also going going to have a, pardon me, a fabulous tour with um, Jess Ziegler in her studio and see how she has things all set up. One of the things that I think you're going to love about her um, studio is how many windows she has to bathe her quilts in glorious light. Um, she's a, a lucky girl. She's got a, a lovely space there. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of my favorite things. Um, as well as um, I've got a quilt picked out um, that someone has submitted that I'm going to draw on and show you how I would quilt it if it were my quilt. And then we've got some lovely show and tell quilts that were sent in by viewers and clubhouse members so that we can see what you're working on. Cause I'm always, I'm always curious. Maybe I'm just downright nosy, but I'm always curious what you're up to. So we got people coming in. Yeah, we got Cindy from Northwest Oregon. Cindy from Northwest Oregon. Oh, it's early out there, Cindy. I guess it's like 10 o'clock. So it's not that early, but yeah. And then we got Liz from San Jose, California. Liz in San Jose. Welcome. Hey, Brenda. And we got Ruth from Lafayette, Indiana. Hey, Ruth. That might be Ruthie. It might be. I think Lafayette. that's Ruthie. And we actually have somebody from all the way from Mumbai. Resting from Mumbai is no. here. Mumbai? Yes. Wow, my goodness. Hello. So we got a lot of folks joining in. Awesome. Awesome. Well, welcome. Well, um, I just want to make sure that you all are aware that we have a lot of tutorials and, and downloadables and things that we um, kind of shout out in our newsletter. So I want to be sure that you are signed up for our newsletter because you'll be alerted when we have clubhouse meetings and what those topics are. And then we go, go through kind of like the show notes, like what, what you might find interesting in our clubhouse meetings, as well as fun links to interesting things and places on the internet that have something quilting going on about them. So be sure you're signed up for our newsletter. And then I also wanted you to, to, to know, we do have um, an APQS Lucy sale going on. So if you are in the market for a long arm machine or you know someone who's looking for a long arm machine, we have um, specials going on for APQS Lucy's and contact your local dealer or your local APQS store or APQS.com or you can contact us here at Quilt of Joy and we'll get you all connected. So I did want you to know about all of those things. And you can find out more information about that on our website as well as at APQS.com. 
Okay, so let's talk about diamonds shapes and putting feathers in diamond shapes because they're a little challenging. And throughout this year, we've talked about spines and you're gonna see some of those spines that we've already talked about. We're gonna use them in our diamond shapes. And we've talked about beginning feather plumes and finding the feather plume that you like best, your friendly feather. So um, we're gonna play with some of those concepts and we're gonna play with them in this diamond shape. We've played with other shapes already, squares and, and triangles. And so we're gonna talk about this diamond shape because it is a little bit more challenging. So um, I would play with this one on paper first and to that end I've, I've gotten you a downloadable um, little workbook that you can get um, at quiltedjoy.com and you can print it out and it has a diamond for you to doodle in for these feathers that we're about to talk about so it has one that's just a plain diamond it also has one can you see this Kelsey or should I go to the handheld camera okay so then I also have one that has registration lines Oh, oh, sorry. Hold on. There he goes. Okay. I have one that's just a uh, registration line so that you have your meridian, um, both north and south, um, marked on there to help you. And then because so many times when you encounter a diamond, it's a big honking diamond. So I gave you another um, piece of paper, another um, half diamond on this last page of your workbook. And what you'll do is you'll print out two of those and you'll take one and fold it up and then just get out your tape and tape them together so that you can make a much bigger diamond because many times when you encounter diamonds they're not small guys they're big guys and so I want you to get used to how to fill a larger diamond as well so that's a way to do it just get out some tape and print it off um, your printer but I would encourage you when you're first starting to think about diamonds and fitting feathers into diamonds that you start out smaller um, only because it gives your brain less of a chance to freak out because <laughs> it's not so stinking big. So start smaller and then you can start to work your way into bigger diamond shapes. But I always say, you know, if you can't doodle it, if you can't draw it, you're not going to be able to quilt it. And I don't mean draw it well. That's not what I mean at all. I just mean if you don't have that brain muscle connection to that path, it's going to be more difficult to take it to the machine and stitch it out. All right, so let's look at a simple diamond and I've got it up here on the screen and we talked um, when we first started talking about uh, feathers this year we talked about how rare it is to do a feather on a straight line like it's it's something a lot of um, feather classes start with but it's not super common so here is where it is common it's not as common in borders or sashing but it's very common in a triangle so I've got my triangle shape and this is what's on your worksheet you've got your two um, meridian lines there and I'm just going to start with at the base of my uh, triangle and I'm going to do my first plume and then I'm going to do my friendly feather is the curled feather and then head back. So I didn't stitch a spine. I'm gonna use that meridian line as my spine, but I didn't stitch it, I'm just going up it. And at this point, I could be doing both sides at once, but I'm actually gonna do one side at a time just because I feel like that's easier for folks to do initially than to do both sides at once. So when I curl and then kick out and then head to that center line and curl, kick out, and head to that center line, and curl, and kick out, and curl, and kick out. And when I get up here to the top, this is where I have a choice of how I want to end my feather. And I'm going to do a terminal feather, but I'm going to do kind of a pointy feather up here to the top like a finial, a finial feather. And then I'm gonna head back down using that line that I've sketched out. I would chalk this in my diamond and head down back to the base and then start at this other side. Curl, kick out. And you wanna, um, you wanna make these skinny so you don't want them to look like bratwurst, right? You want them to look skinny. And 
you just want to fill the space. So whatever your friendly feather is, play with that one. Here's my last one. And then I would break my threads and I'm done. Now I will say before this, I'm likely going to stitch in the ditch all the way around this diamond to just give it some stability so that I don't knock it out of square as I work. All right, I'm gonna see if I can erase all that. I don't know if it'll let me go all the way back. Ah, that's as far as it'll let me go. All right, so <clears throat> let's see if I close that and I don't save it. And then I open it back up. So a lot of people ask me what I'm using and I'm a Mac girl. This is just a free paint program. You likely have a paint program already on your computer. This one's called Paintbrush. Um, and then I'm just drawing on it with a stylus that's in the shape of a pen. Okay, so on this one, what I wanna do instead of that straight spine is I am going to give myself a, an S curve. So I'm gonna give myself an S curve spine. And it's a very big diamond. My S curve was very wonky. Let me see if I can do it better. Um, I'm, let's see if I can I have to move my hand. All right, so I would chalk that out and I would use a ruler to chalk this. And um, Kelsey, can you take that wide camera? I just wanna show them the rulers that I would use. So these rulers are, um, these are called Lily Lines. These are by Bethann Nemesh. And these are French curves, um, like you would find in an art store, uh, art supply store. They're just thick uh, for long arm quilting, for machine quilting, both sit down and stand up. They're a quarter inch thick acrylic and they're etched and they have lots of marking lines on them. And so these have a multiple different curves depending on how you orient them into your space. So if, <clears throat> if you're not comfortable drafting your curves, you can use something like that to draft your curves. Okay, so let's go back um, to the computer. And this is where I would start up one side. I tell you what, I took my mask off just before we started and I feel like I inhaled a piece of it. I'm gonna have to go get a, my water bottle. It's on my desk. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I wash them each night, and then I think I get lint in them. And then I think I inhale the lint. Thank you. Mm, I apologize. Oh, that's much better. All right, so then I, I'm at the top, and I'm going to do another little finial terminal feather, I would come down my spine and I would start back up the other side. And what's nice about the curve, the curved spine, is that it's a little bit more forgiving um, because there's so much going on. The straight spine, you can get kind of caught up in symmetry where you think, okay, I have eight plumes on the left and now I have to have eight plumes on the right and it's just not true. Rachel, if any questions come in, please let me know as we're doing this. All right, I'm coming up to the top, and then I'm gonna do one right here and head back down. So that would be a curved spine in a diamond. All right, and then the next one that I wanna show you, so let me see if I can X out of there without having to completely back all the way out. No, of course not. All right, I'm gonna do it again. Okay, so the next one that I wanna show you, I'm actually gonna show you here, I have it laid out um, on the machine. So I want you to look at this border. So it's a wide border, it's a big old border. This is a big old quilt. And the interior of the quilt have these um, diamond shapes, these square, uh, diamond and a square shapes, diamond and a rectangle actually. And so what I wanted to do was pull that diamond shape out that you see in the piecing out into the border. And so I just, uh, first I stitched those, this is all free motion. I stitched those diamonds with rulers. And then I want you to see that feather spine the, that I put in that diamond. So it's a curved, but it kind of curves in on itself. And then I filled the feathers around it. All right, so let's look at that. So I'm gonna, over here 
and <clears throat> here's our diamond shape. And so I'm just going to take my plume, my spine rather, and I'm going to go up and I'm going to make a nice circle-y circle. And just before, do you see where I would complete it if I kept going? If I kept all the way in, I'd make an actual circle. Just before I make an actual circle, I'm going to change my mind and I'm going to echo back down my spine. All right, so there's my spine. It's a little humpity bumpity, but um, that's the way I draw with a mouse, so I quilt much better than I draw. All right, so now I'm going to fill this in with feathers, and I'm going to use that same curled feather that is my friendly feather for today. And I'm going to work my way around the spine. So one of the things you need to keep in mind is how big is the space that you need to fill because you might be you know committing yourself to a level of density that you really aren't interested in committing yourself to right so so be cautious before you commit yourself do you see how I kicked way out to fill that out to fill up that top space curl plume and curl and a plume curl and a plume and I am paying attention I would go back down my spine or you could break your threads I am paying attention to that that meridian line all the way back down now I'm going to head up this side and curl All right, so that would be how I did that quilt that we just looked at. And one last one that I want to show you. Um, and for this one, let's see if it'll let me X out of all these. Ha, I did it. All right, so for this one, what I want to do is I want to connect this bottom point of my diamond with a gradual curve to that corner. This will be my spine. All right, now I gotta go up here and do the same thing. So it gives me almost like that cathedral windows look. I didn't really like that one. Let me do it again. Come down and into there. And now we're gonna um, actually start. Let me change color so you get a sense of uh, that would be chalked out. Let's do lime green, because I like lime green. Let's do a darker lime green. Okay, so then I would come up and I would start with a keystone feather between those two valleys. And I would start to do my feathers. So there's my first plume. I'm gonna curl. And I'm staying on this side and I have not stitched that spine. I've chalked it, but I have not stitched it. And if you all have any questions about this, put that over there in the chat. I just have a question. Yep. Andrew is asking, could you start in the middle section and feather out in both directions? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. There are so many ways. That was Andrea? Yes. Andrea, there are so many ways to do a diamond. I'm just showing you a few ways. I mean, we could, we could go on for days. Yes, you absolutely could. Play with those. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so Andrea asked, could you start in the middle of the diamond and work your way out rather than starting where I am have been which was the base absolutely Andrea there are so many ways to quilt a shape you just have to find the way that you feel like that day there's no right or wrong I come down this these fine and then I keep going there's no right or wrong and play with it because depending on how it's oriented on your quilt you may find that you like it you know to start or depending on the path you need to take all right, I head down and do this side. Depending on the path you need to take, you may decide that you do. You need to have your feathers emanate from the center rather than a point. You know, we talk a lot when we um, talk about our, and I come all the way down and then I probably break my threads and I go back up here. We talk a lot about when we are um, talking about how to design a quilt, about finding that continuous path and about finding the magic portals of where you can enter a block. 
so that you can find that continuous path. And so that may influence where you start. All right, and come down the, the can you spine. Explain what a keystone cutter is again? A keystone. So you know how um, you know how in uh, Roman, I, I don't know why Roman, I, I'm sure it wasn't the Romans, it was before the Romans, but you know how arches are built with, with stones. And so the way to keep the arches intact as they go up is you have this one stone in the center of the arch that all of the weight is pivoting on, and that's the keystone. <clears throat> that's what keeps the arch up. And so um, that's what we're doing in, where these two spines kind of dip in together. So if you look here on the drawing in the blue, where I've got the two spines that kind of come together to kiss, that's where that keystone feather begins. And all that allows me to do is to give me a base where I can touch as I build my feathers. So those um, registration lines are actually super, super important. And I would keep on, keep on keeping on. Okay, so let's, um, let's stitch out some of these on the machine. I'm going to have to move this big honkin. I think it's a king size. That's a big quilt. Um, all right, so what I've got here on the frame is I've stitched out some diamonds, and I have my registration lines, horizontal and vertical. And so... Um, it is it. All right. Well, thank you, Andrew. I, it, I, I mean, I wouldn't think that the Romans would have invented it, but maybe they did. The Romans invented a lot of things. All right. So we're just going to do that straight spine. And I'm just going to do one side at a time. But if you are a fancy pants person and you are comfortable with doing two sides at once, do two sides at once. I just find to teach, it's easier to teach one side and then the next. And always start at the bottom. See now, Andrew, I would have thought the Greeks would have done it and the Romans kind of claimed it, but the Greeks started it, but what do I know? All right, there's my, my terminal feather, which is really more like a finial. Now Andrew's gonna tell us where finials came from. <laughs> Andrea. Andrea, sorry. Sorry, it's hard to hear. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna head back down. To my base again and start back up. Andrea, I homeschooled my children for goodness a number of years, um, and they act absolutely adored um, Greek and Roman mythology, and we just wallowed in Greek and Roman mythology and history. They loved it. All right, I'm going to break my threads. We didn't do that much with architecture but we certainly talked a lot about Greek and Roman mythology. Okay, so let me get this out of the way. So there's my diamond on a straight spine. I have another one here that's on a, a I've chalked it. Actually, well, no, I'm gonna start at the bottom. Um, so I've chalked that curve and I used that ruler that we talked about before. And I'm gonna head up my spine following my chalked curve swinging out as needed to fill the space. And I'm really working on not holding my machine too tightly. All right, and I'm gonna do just a, a pointed feather there at the top. So I wanna give my machine the ability to move freely by holding it lightly. And it's one of the reasons when you are looking for a longer machine, a stand-up machine, you really need to kind of see how it glides and moves around curves because you need it to move pretty easily. All right, I'm going to go ahead and break my thread. I would normally take a tacking stitch there. But you could also certainly do this on a sit-down machine. Don't think that just because I'm standing here with this glorious uh, long arm machine that you have to use a stand-up machine. You absolutely could use a sit-down machine. All right, let's go to this bottom one. And for this bottom one, I am going to stitch that curvy spine. And it's kind of a, um, oh, like a question mark. I'm going to tuck my tail way in just before I make an actual circle. I'm going to change my mind and head back down and then head up this side. 
And I would encourage you to go back and look at that one clubhouse meeting that we did with five beginner feathers and figure out which beginner feather kind of makes sense to your brain. Don't try to force it. Find the one that seems to flow for you better. I'm gonna curl there, big curl. And I do have my stitch regulator on. And I'm gonna head back down my spine. But one of the things you might try is turning your stitch regulator off when you just are playing. Um, it kind of helps you get to know your machine a little bit more. Little curl and final plume. Um, because it, it just, it takes kind of the, the changes that the um, stitch regulator add to the feel of the machine. If you run your machine in manual mode, it'll help you get a better feel of your machine when you first get to know it. So there's that one, a little smaller. I did it much bigger in that red and white quilt that we looked at. All right, and here is the last one. And I do have um, those arches chalked. I'm not sure that they'll show up all that well on camera. Um, I'm gonna start with the bottoms first. And then I'll do the keystone here in a minute. So, all right, so in the comments section, Tell me what, what quilts you've seen that have a diamond shape in them. Are there any like super common traditional piecing patterns you can think of that would have a diamond shape in them that you could see using? I'm gonna head back down the spine. Here comes my keystone. And then I'm staying to one side of that center line. Coming down my spine, back up, curl. Has anybody shouted one out in the comments yet? All right, and then I would probably break my threads here, so I'm gonna do it on the top. Has anybody shouted out a, a piecing design? I'm surprised, somebody's gonna shout it out. Super traditional with diamonds. I mean, there are loads of different patterns, but I'm thinking of one that's super traditional. Um, Renee had already commented about a Lone Star. A Lone Star, yes. That's from Renee. Yes, good job, Renee. Renee said a Lone Star, that's absolutely right. All right, first feather, curl. Yep, and then there's also the Judy Niemeyer quilts that are so popular right now. She uses loads of diamonds. And you gotta think about diamonds in a different way because they may not be, I'm gonna head down the spine and then I'm gonna head up the bottom side of the next side. Because they may be um, lots of little diamonds, but of course little diamonds can make bigger diamonds. And so you may not wanna do this in little tiny diamonds, but if you can combine all the little tiny diamonds into a bigger diamond and treat it as one unit, and stitch that entire unit as a piece. Here's my keystone. Then um, it's an it's a easy way to kind of combine shapes and get an interesting look. All right, I'm gonna head back down. I'm gonna head back up and do this other side. So go to the website and print out. You'll have to put that, that worksheet in your cart um, at Quilted Joy, last one. All right, I'm gonna break my threads. You'll have to put that worksheet in your cart and check out like you normally would, but it's free. And it's free for the month of September. So grab it now, don't wait till October. Grab it now and um, put it in your cart. And then um, you'll check out and it won't charge you anything and then you'll be able to download it. And then you can play along. You can, you can go replay this and you can play along and make your diamond shapes. So what do you think? Which one's your favorite? Do you like the short, uh, the straight? Here, we'll look at it again. Do you like the straight? Do you like the curve? Can you see those okay, Kelsey? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, okay, I'll go back. Do you like the straight? Do you like the curve? Do you like the one that curls in? Or do you like the double? So see which one, play with them, print out the worksheet and um, 
see which one feels good to you, and then look for a way to, to use it next. I always encourage people to try one new thing per quilt, not six new things. You'll overwhelm yourself. Try one new thing, and um, maybe it's a diamond shape. Um, maybe that's where you kind of play next. Put some practice fabric on and mark out your diamonds and fill them with feathers and see what works best for you. So what it, are, are people saying which one they like? The Barb says she likes the curved one. Barb likes the curved one. I do too, Barb. <clears throat> it's forgiving. That's why I like it. The Worm Whippet says, I like the double. The Worm Whippet. All right. And Stephanie Peterson. Uh -huh. They're all great. They're all great. Yay. Stephanie Peterson says they're all great. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it, definitely that one's more formal too. So you also have to think about the style of quilt that you're doing. Is it a formal quilt or does it have some whimsy to it um, so that you can kind of play around with those spines? And look at that um, Quilt of Joy Clubhouse we did on spines because we showed you five different spines and you could do all of these with those five different spines. There's so many ways to combine feathers. Um, I just want you to find the feather plume that feels good for you and don't think it's the traditional Amish one because I can guarantee you it's not because that one's very very hard. Um, so find a different one that feels better to you. All right, well, that was fun, and I want to thank our sponsor, APQS. Um, APQS machines are 100% handcrafted in Iowa. They are loved the world over, and they come with an industry-leading lifetime warranty. So Quilt Forever with APQS. We really appreciate everything that they do, and um, we're just so thankful that they uh, support us in that way. And don't forget, there is a Lucy sale currently going on. Um, if you are interested along our machine or you know someone who is, <clears throat> contact your local APQS dealer, your local APQS store. Um, you can contact us here at Quilted Joy or you can go to apqs.com for more information. So thank you so much APQS, we love you. All right, I want to share with you that studio that I was talking to you about earlier. So um, we recorded this a few weeks ago and um, Jessica Ziegler uh, let us in to be nosy and uh, look around at her studio and I think you're gonna love seeing all the little tweaks and, and items that she's added to her studio. She's really tricked it out nicely. So let's take a look. Let's be nosy. Hi, Jess. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's good to see you. Hey, I'm, I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Tell me where you're located, Jess. I am in Adele, Iowa. So we're just west of Des Moines. West of Des Moines, perfect. And um, so your space, your studio space that you have, is it, is it, it looks like it's a room in your house, like on the main floor? Totally is, yeah. We, um, I'm right off the living room, which was something that I didn't want. We moved into this house about two years ago and I was intent on having like a basement, walkout space so I could be tucked away. And then this house came on the market and I saw the glass doors and I was like, okay, we could probably make this work. And it turns out, um, it's very helpful to just be in the flow of um, daily life and my kids can easily access me, which is good and bad, of course. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it, it's turned out, it's worked out really well. I like kind of being in the mix. So was that like a living room or something in the house? Um, they called it a den or a flex space. So okay. um, it shares, I don't know if you can see the um, fireplace. It shares a fireplace. It's like a two-sided. So the other side is the living room. And then this is uh, this is the den slash flex space. So. Awesome! Yeah. All right, well, turn the, if you would turn the camera around because I want to sure. see I want to see your space. Oh, you can even look out over the playground. <laughs> That's right. That's my neighbor, so I don't want to be a total creep. But <laughs> <laughs> so you've got your long arm there, yeah. and one side is up against a wall. So how, what, yes. you know roughly the size of the space? You know, I wish I did. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know exactly. I have a 12 foot frame. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're up against this wall here and I do go back there um, in my loading process. I just kind of like to, I feel like it's easier to access from the back. So I kind of sneak back there and, um, and do my um, pinning. And then, uh -huh. yeah, so I don't have to be there a whole lot, but um, most of the work is done from the front, of, front of the machine. When we did first move into the space, I had it turned around and then it wasn't long before I thought like, oh, it's kind of hard to get back there to do all the work. Sure. And so we turned it back around. 
Because you, you, you're computerized. You have a, a, yes. a APQS Millie, right? Yes. Yep. And so you're spending a lot of time then at the front True. of the machine. Yes. Yeah. So there's not a whole lot of reason to go to the back other than loading. Right. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I love your windows. Okay. Yeah. So keep us going around the, okay. um, so you've got some storage underneath. I do. Um, this room doesn't have any closets or other storage. And so I got a, that's actually a very short dresser. Um, I can't remember if it was Wayfair or Overstock or something. Um, so I keep some fabric in there and then over here is an Ikea, um, little thing with, um, thread, <laughs> thread yeah. in the top two drawers and then, um, some shipping supplies in the bottom. And so, and then where I have, um, my computer set up, that is actually a cart with storage and drawers on the other side of it, but oh. I kind of converted it into a standing desk. Um, so if I want to stand or sit, I can do sure. it over there. So there's a little bit more storage there. Um, and then tell me, you've got like a cushy mat in front yeah. of your machine. What yeah. is that? It's like an anti-fatigue um, mat that I got. It was like, I, I ordered it at the same time as my machine itself because um, I was, before this, I was in an unfinished basement and I knew I'd have concrete floors and that was important and it wasn't um, computerized at the time. So being hand guided, I knew it was going to be on my feet quite a bit. And so that was a non-negotiable. I got that right away. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a big difference, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah. And so your batting, you have your batting kind of propped up there on the side yep. by your lovely, uh, your fireplace just adds such a, <laughs> such a lovely homey touch to it. Doesn't it? it? <laughs> <laughs> So you have your batting um, over there. You just keep it propped up on the side? Yeah, I do. And then to cut what you need, do you roll out on your bars? Is that? Um, no, I actually roll it on the floor. Oh. And I use the planks of my floor to keep a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You know, use what we have. Tell me what kind of batting you have over there. There's three different kinds. Yep. Yeah, so I stock 100% um, cotton, 100% poly, and then an 80-20 blend. Uh -huh. And I get those all from Quilter's Dream. Uh -huh. And I've kind of played around. I'm This um, cotton I have is the Deluxe, which I've never had before. And I kind of like that. I might keep doing that. Yeah, we, we were, we've we been really surprised that that Deluxe, that thicker cotton has become very popular here as well. Yes. So. All right, so what are all the little posty notes you have up on the wall? Yeah, well, I have a, um, it's called the Long Arm League, and it's a membership that we are mostly digital quilters who are offering edge-to-edge -edge services as a business. And so I'm just helping other quilters, like kind of coming alongside them to help them through like the marketing stuff. Like we talk about what batting to source and what threads we like and it's a community and we offer some education and um, free pantographs and just other membership benefits. Cool. So I, I have their names so I can see them all the time because yeah. <laughs> they're pretty much, they're my focus now. Awesome. And so do you piece in that room too, or do you have a separate room to piece in? No, I, I piece in here, but only I have to really shift. It's not like I have projects going on at the same time as when I'm quilting. So oh. I keep my, um, like my ironing board and that kind of stuff in um, a hall closet. Just, uh, it's very close, but with this room being um, small and without much storage. And I also like to keep it clean looking for pictures. Cause yeah. when I take a client's quilt off of the frame, I like to um, send them pretty photos of it. And so I like to keep my my room um, pretty minimal, sure. minimalistic. <laughs> um, so I, I really shift my thinking and focus when I do piece, kind of clean up all the quilting stuff um, or the, you know, stuff on the frame and then do the piecing here. And you've got a rolly cart there at the end of the frame. What do you, yes. what do you have in there? Yeah. So um, this, I, I keep these little tins on each side just for little scraps um, uh -huh. of like, you know, threads mostly. Um, but then um, I keep my needles in here and old needles and just um, my tooth, my toothbrushes. Do you guys use toothbrushes in your <laughs> cool thing? <laughs> oh, a dirty one and a clean one. <laughs> you clean it? Okay, clean so, so I'm a little concerned, Jess, about your oil there. You need a new bottle of oil. Oh, do I? Yeah. 
Okay. Thank yeah, you. that that's oil that's been exposed to sunlight, and it's just oh. it's starting to. You need a new bottle of oil. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. So there you go. That's your tip for the day. Thank you. Thank you so <laughs> right. much. So if you would turn around so we can see your smiling face. Okay. So tell us three things that you would recommend to your bestie, and they don't have to be quilt related. Okay. Well, two of them definitely are. Well, okay. I'll just, I'll start with the one <laughs> that makes my life easier, which is Home Chef, which is a delivery for meals. So it's not deciding what's for supper. It's, um, all the ingredients and the instructions come. So that is something that it makes it more equitable too for my husband and I, we can both like jump in and, and do the food stuff. Okay, the second one is Remarkable Tablet and it is like three to $400 price point, but it has changed my organization. Um, it's so much better. It is really like using pen and paper. And then everything gets uploaded to the cloud and I can even practice my free motion designs or if I'm done designing a new pantograph, I can sketch it out with my hand. I love the remarkable tablet. Uh -huh. And then um, the third thing is the long arm league. If anybody is, um, you know, in that niche of edge to edge digital and for business, we'd love for, to have you join us. And that's it. Those are my three. Awesome. All right. So if people want to connect with you, where can they find you online, Jess? Yep. Um, I'm on Instagram a lot. So my um, handle is at Threaded Quilting and also at Long Arm League. And those will have the links to those two websites. And yeah, that's awesome. That's it. Well, thank you so much for all of your time. You have a lovely space. You really, what I really appreciate about your space is you figured out a way to be a little bit separate from the main flow of the house, but you're still right there if the kiddos need you. Yep. You can hear what's going on and keep a tab on them at the same time that you're working on your customer quilt. So yep. good for you for, yeah. for kind of figuring that out. I don't know that I would have seen the bonus room and gone, oh, that's a long arm room. I think it would have taken me a little longer to connect all that. So um, you've done a great job. Thank you. It's a great conversation piece when people come over. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> What's, in there? There? What's going on? <laughs> all right. I'll Thanks see you later. Thank us. you Me. so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you so much, Jess. I really enjoyed spending time with you. I really enjoyed seeing your space. And I do have to report that Jess did get some new oil and she put a picture of it up on Instagram. It looks so much better. Um, and I really enjoy Jess's pictures that she posts, especially on Instagram, because she has this way of laying the quilts off the front of her frame. And you can really see the texture of the pantographs that she's using. And she always um, labels which pantograph it is, because a lot of times you have a hard time seeing the pantographs like in the wild so that you can pick out the designs that you like. So um, check out her stuff. I think you'll really, really like it. And thank you so much, Jessica, as well, for the time that you took to let us be nosy. I appreciated it. Okay, so we did have a question that came in for um, earlier, and that was from Stephanie. And she asked about thread buildup. She said that she uses Glide a lot and that she has some trouble when doing feathers um, as she comes down the spine with thread buildup. So, Stephanie, you have some choices. Um, for one thing, Glide has a sheen to it, so it draws the eye, right? It's, it's, it's our sparkly friend. So you could try using a thread that has a matte finish, and you could try using a thread that's a little skinnier. And Glide has a sister thread. It's made by the same manufacturer, and if your machine likes Glide, it'll love this thread. Um, so it has a sister thread. It's called PrimoSoft. And PrimoSoft, I've got some here. Um, Primo Soft is a matte finish polyester. If you have ever played with um, So Fine, so So Fine is made by Superior. This is the same stinking stuff, it's just a whole lot cheaper. And um, it is gonna be a skinnier thread than Glide, and it comes on a cone with 3,000 yards, so there's a white. And right now, if you are a So Fine fan, um, it's hard to find some of the colors right now, and Primo Soft has all the colors that you're gonna want. Um, so I would try something a little skinnier. I would try something that has a matte finish. And by the way, Primo Soft also has matching um, pre-wounds. This is L size. Um, these are called MagnaSoft and they're magnetic on one side and they're plastic on the other. So you can't put them in backwards when you go to put them in your bobbin case. You do have to take the backlash spring out of your bobbin case though. And um, there's both L jars of the MagnaSoft and there's M jars of the MagnaSoft. And they're, again, they're polyester. And then you may find if you're interested in in the Primo Soft, I'm going to try to get this 
on the camera, it's a little hard. Um, hopefully you can see this. We have a color card too, so it has all of the actual thread on it because it's so hard to um, look at a computer and get the colors right because it depends on your computer monitor. And so these have the actual thread, so it's much easier to match to your quilts. And it does denote which ones have um, matching bobbins. And on the website, on our website, you'll see that we also have um, on each top thread the matching bobbins. So you don't even have to go hunt or think. It's all sitting right there, right there for you. Um, and then the other thing I would say, Stephanie, is don't be afraid to break your threads. You know, maybe you don't want to travel back down the, plume, the, the spine. Maybe you want to break your threads and then go back to the bottom and start again. But don't work from the top down because you're going to get funky looking feathers. You want to work from the bottom up always. Um, if there are any other questions that came through, Rachel, let me know. But hopefully that helped everybody. And, um, and take a look at the Primo Soft and the Magna Soft. I think you're really going to love it. Um, it's, it's become one of our absolute favorite threads around here. Um, okay, so I would also request if, if any of this has been helpful to you, if you have found this um, interesting, um, I, would, I would love for you to review us on Google. It helps us reach more people. It helps the magic Google algorithm um, give us a little bit of uh, grace and introduce us to more folks and helps us grow. So um, I would love it if you would review us. I read every one of them personally and um, it really means a lot to me that you took out time from your day to give us a review. Um, also consider sharing this with someone. It's um, just about the best compliment you can give me is to share this uh, with someone that you think would find interesting. So thanks so much for being a part of it. Okay, so over on our Quilted Joy Clubhouse, we ask for people to post a photo of a flimsy, so an unquilted quilt top, and then I pick one and draw on it to show how I would quilt it if it were my quilt. Okay, so here's the one that I picked for this month. This is from Bonnie, and I really loved her quilt. I loved how scrappy it was. I loved how modern it was. I loved all the drama in it. So I just wanna show you, Bonnie, how I would quilt this quilt if it were my quilt. So take a look at the blocks in Bonnie's quilt. Bonnie has their, um, it's probably easier to see in this yellow. And I'm gonna zoom in. I think that might help too. So in this yellow block here, you can see the flying geese a little bit better. So see how the flying geese are coming down and then see how these are just, um, they're probably two inch patches over here. And then if you look, like these geese are going up this way. So see these green geese are going up this way, and then there's more, a field of two inch patches here. All right, so what I was thinking is I really wanted to bring out these geese because the, of the, um, all the different prints, sometimes they can be a little hard to see. See those geese there? Those are a little easier because they're the yellow on the green but like these red ones are a little harder to see. So I wanna give them a little structure to make them pop. The first thing though that I wanna do is I want to um, stitch around, stitch in the ditch. So the first thing I would do is stabilize my quilt, my block, and I would stitch in the ditch. And that way as I start working, I'm not gonna knock this askew. And then I'm gonna go up and out and up and out. So I'm, I'm basically ditching my geese half a goose at a time. Come back down. Now, notice there's three patches here, three two inch patches, one, two, three. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be interesting if the geese that are going this way, if I quilted geese on this side going the opposite direction? And so to travel to get there, so I ended here, to travel, I'm just gonna go across this middle aisle of two inch patches, and then I'm gonna start on this side. There's half of my goose. Okay, so now I've got geese going one direction geese going the other direction. I end it here, and then I'm just gonna go back and forth, and back and forth, and then I'm gonna travel across the ditch and do it up the opposite way. All right, so there is, that's how I would do your uh, blocks, uh, Bonnie, so let's Take a look at that. So there's your blocks. I've got them. 
with the geese going one way, the geese going the other way, and then that kind of funky crosshatch in between to connect them. And like I said, I would ditch all of these before I got started. So then I started thinking about how I could, because it's floating on this white, and I want to enhance the background, but I also want to recognize that the sashing is the same fabric that the setting triangles are in, and I kind of need to separate them so that I can deal with these setting triangles in a way that doesn't impinge, infringe upon the sashing. So then I thought, well, really what I need to do, I'm going to go to a straight line. What I need to do is just outline these. So I need to outline these and give myself that same basically carve out sashing with the stitching and extend that sashing all the way around. But what I thought is where, this, where they meet, I'd really like to just add a little square in there. Uh-oh, hold on. I'd really like to add a little square, a little cornerstone where they meet. And so to, to have that happen as I stitch this outline, what I would do is I would go down, around, go back over the top of those two areas I just did, come down, around, down, around, and continue on, all right, Bonnie, to get that, pull that sashing out and go all the way around. All right, so let's take a look at that, Bonnie. Okay, Bonnie, there you go. And so I've, it's got all those little um, cornerstones in between. I figure you, you can, you know, you know what's going on in all these blocks. I didn't draw it up, but you, you got it, you got it down. So then I started thinking about the setting triangles and how could I nod to what's going on in the blocks and pull it out into the setting triangles. And so what I decided to do was um, basically make these into um, an area where I can quilt more geese. So I separated these out into three sections. And then I'm gonna take this section and put a, a goose I'm going to take this section and put a goose, and I'm going to take this section and put a goose. And I love the idea of using the piecing to mimic the quilting so that the piecing and the quilting nod to each other. And what's going on in the center of the quilt gets pulled out into the outside of the quilt, just like you would do with um, even colors of fabric you'd likely not introduce a new color of fabric in the border. You'd likely introduce something, you'd use something that was used in the main body of the quilt in your border. It's the same idea when you're picking out a design to use, this, this little leg got short, a design to use um, all along your um, border. Um, out here, again, the same thing. It's a little hard to see, Bonnie, because the photo got a little cut off. But it's the same idea, um, only this time I would start big, and I would go small out to the outside edge. Um, you'd have to decide, I think I do like him pointed out. You could point it in, but I like it pointed out. All right, so then I thought, um, let's see if I can. Okay, so there, there we go, Bonnie. That's what I've got going on. But I really wanted to increase the density level out here because I felt like it just wasn't dense enough. And so all I did is I thought, you know, what would be nice is if this was just a stipple just a stipple to kind of push down, push back this area and let those geese pop up. Any kind of background filler you like, I'm just using a stipple, but it could be, it could even be, um, we've talked about uh, refrigerator foils. It could even be those. Um, if you like Linda Her Herska, she talks about refrigerated curls but it could also just be um, a stipple and just fill all that in. All right, so Bonnie, I'm gonna show you what it looks like with all the things we've talked about. There you go, Bonnie. All right, Bonnie, you can do anything you want, but if it were my quilt, 
that's what I do. I would do. I think that that would look um, really awesome, and I think that you'd be happy with it. And um, I think it would enhance the piecing and nod to the piecing and have the quilting and the piecing kind of look like they belong together. So um, if you get a chance, Bonnie, to put that up in the clubhouse when you get it done, however you decide to quilt it, um, we would all love to see um, how you decide to quilt it, Bonnie. All right, so let's take a look at some of the other quilts that have been shared in the Quilted Joy Clubhouse there on Facebook. I'm um, in our show and tell. So Linda C, she posted um, this quilt. Don't you love the color palette of this quilt? It's so calm and cool and I, I just really, really love it. And so you can see that she did, um, um, there's a table runner there as well. And um, Linda did an all over edge to edge uh, there on that runner. And it's just a, a really beautiful quilt, Linda. Good job. Rhonda posted this photo. Okay, so Rhonda, I got to tell you, when I saw your pebbles, I went, "Oh my goodness, Rhonda, you are a, you are you're a good a good good uh, patient quilter because that really does that makes my eyes water when I get my pebbles, um, all those pebbles. It is absolutely beautiful. Now, take a look at how she did those cathedral arches on that square to give her a place to put her feathers and notice where her feathers emanate from. The spine of her feather comes from the ditch of the block. So she's not using those cathedral window arches the way we did in the diamonds, which but she could have. She used the actual ditch to be the spine for her feather. Great job, Rhonda. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And Kim posted this one. Don't you love this? So Kim, um, this was a quilt that was featured um, in the, oh goodness, I think it was two seasons ago um, in uh, Fonz and Porter Love of Quilting. This one was designed by Sarah uh, Gallegos, the, my co-host there on Fonz and Porter. And Kim made this quilt and I love how she incorporated not only the wishbones, but also the straight lines. Um, it really has a nice um, structure to it and she did a great job quilting it. Good job, Kim. Diane H. posted this. This was her first quilt that she entered into um, her state fair. I think it was her state fair. Maybe it was her county fair. Anyway, a fair. And she got an honorable mention. And she said that she just recently found us and she's enjoying the clubhouse so much. Um, and don't you love her, her, her wall hangings there? I really love them. Um, so congratulations on your ribbon, Diane. It looks beautiful. And Sandy B. posted this one. This was her first free motion um, long arm quilt. And um, all those purples and scrappiness. Good job, Sandy. And and then Ray posted this one. Ray, you're going to have to post some close-ups because I want to know more about this because it looks like cotton sateen and it looks like you used a yellow, like a bright yellow thread on a white cotton sateen and it looks like it's wool batting, but I'd, I'm totally guessing. So Ray um, does the quilting, his wife does the piecing, and so his wife has this um, beautiful painted flower and then he create the setting for that beautiful painted flower and she's going to applique that, that flower down in the center of that quilt. So lovely. I, um, they, they work together and they make beautiful stuff. So good job, Ray. Um, Melanie posted this one and uh, so you have to look closely. Do you see the drones? So Melanie made this for her nephew and her nephew loves drones and so she pieced two drones that are kind of floating over her little village there. Great idea. But I want you to notice her cornerstones in that border and how just with that border print and rotating it 45 degrees she created this really interesting cornerstone design and just let the fabric do the heavy lifting. It wasn't pieced, it was just how she fussy cut that fabric to give her that um, dynamic outside um, border cornerstone. So good job, Melanie. And Brenda, Brenda, now this one is not quilted yet, but this was a, um, a pattern of mine that Brenda did. This one is Seaside Sunset. It's also called Magic and Illusion. Um, and don't you love the colors that she chose for this? It just sparkles. Um, so beautiful job, Brenda. Um, thank you so much for posting it. I tell you, like the biggest compliment a person can get is to design a quilt and have somebody else love it enough to want to make it too. So I just, I thank you, Brenda. You made my day. Um, it's gorgeous. You did a super job. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that you have um, been working on there in the clubhouse. Uh, like I said, I think I'm just nosy, so I, I'd really like for you to post more photos because I really enjoy seeing what you're up to. Um, and uh, again, don't forget to um, review us on Google. There's a link there in the description um, so that other people can find us and we can more easily bring you um, further clubhouse meetings like this. Next month, our topic is going to be five fun feather plumes. So it's been like the year of feathers. So we've talked about five beginner plumes. We're gonna take it one little step further. And that's on Wednesday, October the 7th at one o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Pacific. And those are five fun feather plumes.
<laughs> and then um, don't forget to join us on Facebook and all of our other social uh, media um, home headquarters. We're on Facebook. We're over on Instagram. A lot of times Instagram, I'll put more like um, travel photos and personal photos, and, like a picture of my cat and like what's going on in my little world. And then um, over on YouTube, we have a variety of um, tutorials and other videos for you to explore. So um, did we have any other questions that came in that we need to address before we say goodbye to everybody? What color would I use in the white? Okay, so you know, it, it depends on how. So the question is, uh, what color thread would I use in those outside white um, uh, setting triangles on her quilt? And it, some of it depends on how courageous I feel that day. If I wanted to blend, I'm gonna choose white, yeah? But um, in that case, Bonnie, I think I would go with a lime green. I know that's like a crazy wild choice, but like there's very few times where you get to quilt in lime green and that quilt would absolutely stand up to a luscious, bright lime green glide thread. I think it would be glorious. And because you're stippling around those geese, it's a little more forgiving because you know, you're know you kind of like, if you kind of wobble or bobble, your little meanders will kind of cover all of that up. And there's so many wild colors going on in it that I think it would look really cool with a lime green thread. So there you go, that's the color thread I would choose. All right, well, thank you guys so much and I will see you in October. All right, see you guys later, have a good day. Mm -hmm.